a question about today's dive. Um, we are diving to Seamount G. Um, we are shooting for a depth of approximately uh, 3,656 meters to start, at the, not the base, but as low as we can on the Seamount, and then transect up one of the flanks of the Seamount to approximately 1,846 meters. Um, have we seen any whales lately? We did see a pilot whale as we, just as we uh, put the ROVs in for our very first uh, dive. So we are almost at our destination. Looks like we're at about 3,400 meters at the moment. Yeah, bottom on sub bottom. For those of you just tuning in, we are uh, descending down to unnamed Seamount G of the Lu'ua'ea Hiki Kekuolono Kai Expedition. This is our second dive of the expedition. We're going to be diving to approximately, our target is uh, 3,656 meters, and uh, we are nearly at that target, so I will let the ROV team do their thing soon.
If you have any questions, please leave them in the nautiluslive.org chat box and we will get to them as we can. We're going to be looking for some, well, mostly exploring, but also looking for some uh, particularly crusty rock samples, whatever we can find biologically. It looks like we have about 100 meters left to go. We should start seeing some... Uh, Altitudes coming up soon above bottom as we approach it. Can I clear trails? Okay. Oh, look, our first ping 100 meters, 99 meters. We're getting there. So exciting. The last time we got to the bottom of my uh, dive, it was just after I'd left watch. A question will this mount eventually get a name? Yes, it will. Who picks it? Are you aware of that? There's a there's several cultural organizations that are working together to pick the name. I don't have them all right in front of me though. Yeah, naming sig mounts is a, a bit of a process. Um, you have to be you have to submit your name. Uh, it has to be reviewed by a committee. You know, all sorts of things before it can be officially named. But first quick, step quick is Doppler. to explore. What? Quick, uh, do we do that normally? The quick Doppler? I can. Sure. You want the position source set too? Sure. Please. Okay. And but. We haven't been doing that, but I think that's generally the norm. Okay. I don't know. I usually do it when we get on the bottom but I'm happy to do whatever makes you happy. Yeah, I don't know why. This is, doing it on the bottom is probably just fine too. Yep. Oh, I see bottom. Mm -hmm. And what a lovely bottom it is. Once you're settled, Trevor, let me know when you're ready for a white balance. Roger. You can be in auto heading now. Cool. So, Coralie, are we going to plan on sampling rocks at regular intervals like we were yesterday? I'm hoping to. What are the depths are we targeting? So, the first step would be at the bottom of the seamount. So, if we could find a good rock and then a water pair. And then... Hopefully around 362 meters up from there, continuously until we get to the top. 
362 is a very precise number. Why, why that number? Well, the <laughs> I'm just basing why? that off of the numbers I got. Gotcha. I don't know if you like, you know, divide it evenly in four parts or... Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, I spy with my little eye a coral. What's going to be our first moves here? Just directly upslope? Yeah. Okay. It looks like that is going to be Challenge? more east than earlier. Or than earlier. That's the wrong word. Let me try that again. More east than the map shows. Probably like, what is that, 110, 115? I could go a bit more, right? 130 maybe? Yeah, give it a full sweep. Yeah, I'll hold heading there. 130. All right, and there's a small glass sponge in view, too. Can I have the, whatchamacallit, and the what's-it view, please? How can you tell we've been on watch together a little, a little bit here? Can you please turn off the porch lights and the lasers? Oh, fine. Go ahead. Thank you. So we are just setting up to do our color balance. White balance, just hold tight. I'm just sitting in auto XY to give you something of a consistent spot. Okay, so I'm gonna cap it. It's gonna go black for a second. Right, white balance time. Great, thanks. All right, all good, thank you. All right. Okay, let me turn off these puppies, and you're good. All right. All right, erase up. Okay, let's do some science. Ready to go? Yeah, let's do some science. Let's. Uh, can we zoom on that little sponge? Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, just so we can see what it is. Which sponge do you think you could... Point to it on the Telestrator. I just love the Telestrator. Yep. <laughs> Any excuse <laughs> to use it. Okay, zoom in, please. So this is a little glass sponge, and I was curious as if it was uh, rooting in the sediment or if it was on a rock. So I'm not do a quite little pivot sure. Here. Maybe I can pivot. Let's see. Looks like in the sediment. Yeah, it's in the sediment. So it's not what I thought it was. Cool. It's definitely a okay. glass sponge. Thanks, come wide. The sediment here uh, seems to be a little bit sort of stickier in consistency, brown. It's 
So we have a number of animals that will actually root themselves in the sediment. So like that little sponge, it actually connects down. Ooh, let's check this out, if we can. Yep. Sure. This is, might be one of the items on our wish list. Ooh, let's hope so. So there is a glass sponge that we're looking for called Corbitelline, new genus, because uh, it has not yet been described. And this looks very close to what that might be. Okay, go ahead, Zoom. Yeah, so I'm looking at this cor a sponge. It has this sort of wide osculum up here, and it's attached to a, a, a cobble. Is that the kind of thing you want to sample? Um, yeah, let's sample this. Okay. Come wide, please. So to me, it's not a ocean, a is, marine biologist. Is this uh, fragile, or can we should we slurp it? Should we no. box it? What would you like to do? Um, it's going to be pretty soft. So if you picked it up with the manipulator, it'll just sort of um, squish down like a like a, a regular kind of sponge. It won't fracture. Okay, so um, but it does look small, so it might be easier for you to slurp. Okay, we can slurp. So for me, not a marine biologist. Those two sponges look pretty similar from a distance. How could you tell that that might be uh, what we were looking for? So this guy um, has that big wide opening at the top. That's called an osculum. And then it, it looked a little bit sort of lumpy or frillier um, than the other one. The other one had um, these long spicules that it was using to root in the sediment. And this one is uh, attached to the rock. And so this one, what we're looking at is in the family Euplectility, subfamily Corbitelline. And then the other one looked to be a Pheronomatid. So it's a different family. Just uh, a lot of looking at a lot of sponges. And uh, over time, we sort of start to see these small patterns and, and get used to identifying these animals. Practice makes perfect. So the more you watch on Nautilus Live, the more you'll learn about how to identify all these different animals. So stay tuned. I'm sure you guys will be experts in no time. I feel like it's like... Um watching the Great British Bake Off. You know, I hear my friends, like, giving the contestants, like, baking advice, and they don't even bake. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, It's exactly. like they just, like, become, like, mini experts in the techniques, even though they're not even the ones doing it. Yeah, you'll just feel like, oh, no, I, I don't think her idea is correct. Watch the knife there. Coral cutters are brutal for that. Do you want to zoom in, Tina? Okay. Got suction. Nice. Oh. Oh. Most of it. Ah, uh, that should be good. Okay. There's all the pieces of it. Ah. Uh, oh yeah. It definitely got a little bit shredded, huh? Yep. Where did that go to? That's in jar one. What sample are we on? That was one, sorry. Should be, what, Zero, 21? Yep, 021. 021, Roger.
Yeah, if we had collected it with the manipulator and put it in a box, it would just float out every time we open the box. It's kind of no winning with sponges, is there? No, not really. If they're attached to a rock that you could move, does that help? Um, that would help. Okay. Um, we also do want a rock here. Yeah, can we grab a rock? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay, the one that's kind of to the left or bottom. Telestrator? Like That one. Oh. Oh, enhance. <laughs> oh. Okay, this one. That, that one. one. Okay. okay. Do you think you can try that one? That, that one might be stuck to the bottom. This is my favorite game. Will is it, it move? Stuck? Yeah. <laughs> Time on will it move? The whole thing or just the little one on top? Just a little knob. A little nugget. Uh, that looks pretty stuck. Yeah, it's not coming. What's your uh, fallback plan? Okay. Then um, let's try. Can you reach this one? Yep. No, I don't Wait, think No, that. no. No, no. <laughs> How about? I think, I think it's going to be stuck, but you can yeah, reach it. It looks stuck. What about? Is this one too low? Nope. Okay. Will it move from two? Nope. It's pretty. I think we'd have to dig. Okay. How about off to the right? This one? Yeah. Let's go for oh, that one. Okay. Oh, oof. Oopsies. Pushing it. All right, well. We're pretty stuck. Stuck? Yeah. Mm. Bottom left? Yeah, it's stuck. No, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't oh, go it with moves. a bump, it won't go. Oh, it moved. Did it? A little bit. Yeah, it's least snap. Can't see it though. No, maybe oh, maybe not. I don't think so. No. How about, okay. We already tried this one, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, then. We haven't tried those bottom left ones. No. These ones? Just left of the circle. Yeah. That one? Those two. Okay. And if those are stuck, I, would, I think we can safely say that they are all stuck. Yep. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Great work. That was exciting. <laughs> I'll say, yeah. Oh, look close oh. there. Yeah, All right. that's better. Nice. Even in the light pool. Nice. Okay. Why don't we put that in starboard A? Okay. Starboard ally. Bring it down a bit there, Angela. We can zoom in on it. Can you zoom in on? Thank you. Want to take some frame grabs? Okay, starboard A. Starboard A. Starboard okay. A. <laughs> Get the sample level, please. That was zero two two. Roger, zero two two.
Great, yeah, as long as we can see the tether, it's all good. Roger. Uh, box out, please. Box out. I have a weird little stem on that rock, like a mushroom. What that's all about. Can we grab a Niskin? Yeah, a Niskin. Oops. Let me know when you're ready for dive. Ready for dive. Oh yeah, with bubble once here. Yeah, oops. Uh, can I get it on the Magnum? Yeah. Or, sorry, I meant bubble. Yep. Following yeah. you over there. Thank you. Oh, too much. What happened? Sorry, can I see the manip in the Zeus? Thank you. Do we have all Niskins open? All yeah. Niskins yeah, are open. Must. Whatever you want to do. Okay, you can move it over a little. Thank you. I'll go for number one. Come on. Oh, what am I doing? I gotta get the camera on that. Huh. Oh yeah. Oopsies. Come on. That's hard. Yep, good. Okay. Hey. Nice. That was zero two three. Roger. Zero two three. Lovely. Great. We've collected three samples and we've been on bottom for only a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. We have to get, you know, as much as we can out of our bottom time. Yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yeah, let's get let's going. Let's go. What are we waiting for? All right. Do you want to uh, do 135? You want to start small? Sure. So 20 meters. Sure. Bridge nav. Can we get a two zero meter step bearing one three five? Oh, what's this uh this Let's thing right here? Okay. Shiny. Zoom in please. This thing? No, not that thing. That's a sponge. Oh, okay. There was a like a, a shiny sort of snail-looking thing oh, right on I this rock. Yeah. yeah. Getting a little trampy up there. Yeah. Okay, zoom in on the snail, shrimpy, shiny, blah blah blah. <laughs> snail. Ooh, Aww. snail. That's awesome. Scary. And yeah, we don't see snails too often. Oops. Do you know what kind of snail it is? Um. Okay. I'm not sure. Thanks. I don't know my mollusks too well. Um, there is a snail that lives here uh, called Gaza daedalus, and uh, it does this thing when it 
like senses danger where it starts to swim uh, by flailing its foot around, which is quite fun. But we haven't really surveyed a lot of uh, deep sea snails. You see dash cam, Trevor? Yeah. You can turn it on and off. Weird. Yeah. Aaron, are you Iris down on Argus Cam? Okay. Gotcha. I missed that. Sorry. Yeah, makes sense. I just want to make sure the lights were okay. Can we snap snoom on this coral? Yeah, you betcha. So this looks to be Ramula Gorgia militaris. As we zoom in, we'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay, go ahead and zoom now. Bridge Ooh. staff, can we get another yep. two zero meters, one three five? This specimen uh, has some damage to it, you can see. You know, parts of the skeleton are bare of tissue. Oh, and there's like a nice little barnacle making its home on this coral. So we've noticed that uh, when parts of a coral die, they, they usually get colonized by other organisms, especially uh, hydroids or barnacles will start growing on those barren parts of the skeleton. Just got a question about um, why we typically see whale falls on very flat seabed. I think we were just talking about this a few nights ago. I think it's just gravity, right? I mean, you see a little swimmer there. Yeah, what yeah. is just a lot a chance? A little snail. A lot of the sea floor is flat, um, so that's why you likely see more whale falls there. It's also where you look. Um, you know, it's the uh, Luck of the draw if you find one, unless you are actually doing the sinking yourselves. Um, some scientists have actually sunk whale carcasses in order to be able to study the process of how 
um, life continues after one life ends down in the deep ocean. Bridge and Ab, another two zero meters, one three five. How does one get themselves a whale carcass that they're able to sink? Um, well, uh, if a lot of whales um, have unfortunate accidents with ships, so if you have a whale that might have been struck by a ship, um, you can drag the carcass out uh, and then sink it using uh, weights. Okay. Zoom in there, please. I've actually participated in a whale necropsy. Wow. Which was quite interesting. Um, the poor animal had been hit by a ship coming into Tampa Bay, and I was able to help the team that was working on the necropsy, which was a really good experience. I also smelled like dead whale for way longer than I'd like to admit. Huh. What is this? This is a really cool looking anemone. Okay. Also, the rock's pretty cool, too. Yeah, you know, got that botryoidal uh, texture. Yeah. Busting out my geology terms. Word of the day. Botryoidal? Botryoidal. What's the first letter? B, B. as in? Delta? It never gets to use B that as in word, boy. so it's very exciting. Florally, please uh, define. Already, already lost it. Botryoidal is this, like, really rounded texture that you see. Why does it form that texture? Do you know? Um, could be for a bunch of different, I don't know, a bunch of different reasons. How does anyone form a texture? <laughs> no, we're not doing this again. <laughs> there are existential <laughs> crises on the seafloor. <laughs> Is it just easier, like a, the, the best way to precipitate minerals is just sort of in a smooth pattern or? No, um, I mean, for ferromanganese crust, like, there's, it gets into a lot more chemistry than I know, but there's, like, reaction, like, how reactions Can you zoom in, please? form, there's, like, a energy level that is, oh, it's a rock. like, good for it to grow in a certain direction. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And, like, it has to do with, like, surface area and a bunch of different factors. So, yeah. Oh, there's this a floaty. little guy. Floaty. Zoom in on the floaty squishy. Floaty squishy. Oh, you're teeny. Just the littlest. Oh, fast, though. Oh, yeah. They're really, they're really tricky. <laughs> yeah. That's a type of hydro medusa. Oh, so Come back. small. Come back. Ah, I go up, you go down. <laughs> oh, trickery. Very cute. It is very cute. I want one. <laughs> what would you do with one? I would put it in an aquarium, ah, okay. a deep sea aquarium, Rich and I Nav, keep it at pressures and temperatures. Two zero meters, one three five. <laughs> Titanium aquarium with viewports. Yeah. I'd be totally into that. I have looked into yeah. having Can you it. come up on Delta, please? Roger. Bonk. Bonk. I have looked into having a jellyfish. They need, like, constantly circulating water tanks and all kind of craziness. And they don't live very long, so. Right. Yeah. Pressure dreams. What's this stick? A stick. I'll zoom in on it. Stand by. A stick. It's probably not a stick. Not a stick. It just looks like a stick. Stick like. Oh, this stick? That stick. Oh, that might be a coral. Let's take a zoom on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, go ahead. It sure is. Might be a primnoid coral. Ugh. Not seeing any um, nodes, so that's why I don't think it's a bamboo. Really long. It tentacles. does have really long tentacles. So is that the gigantia? Um, 
It could be, but usually Gigantia has whorls of at least three polyps, and I only see two polyps in this whorl. Okay. So this is uh, unbranched from Noen. Um, Thanks, come on. I wonder how playing that meter stick game with that coral would be. Probably too, really hard. Too noodly. Speaking of corals and sponges, do they have any defenses to unwanted residents? Yeah, a number of corals actually have uh, bioluminescent capabilities, uh, which can attract attention to themselves if they're uh, being fed on by a predator, which would hopefully attract predators of the coral predator. Um, the predator. Some corals produce a lot of mucus when under stress, so that might deter something from eating it as well. Um, other corals have uh, spikes and um, sclerites that might deter something from eating it. But like all things, as one adaptation uh, is created, the another animal will adapt to, you know, thwart that adaptation. It's an arms race that keeps going on. I don't know if anybody's beating a hagfish, though. <laughs> yeah, I think the hagfish has definitely um, figured out exactly how much mucus is enough, and that's all of the mucus. <laughs> all of the mucus. How much mucus is enough? Probably as much as my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the roommate. Shout out Josh Pye. <laughs> Can't you fry... Uh, hagfish mucus as like an egg white substitute. Whoa! I I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go throw up now. I terrible. definitely <laughs> would pass on that. <laughs> well, why would you use it as a substitute for egg white? We need to change the subject right now. <laughs> Let's look at this white star. Yeah, white star. <laughs> it's like ooh, distraction. Go ahead, zoom in, please. So we're gonna look at this uh, white brittle star. Hiding. Has a really nice little pattern on its central disc. Oh, it's pretty quick. Oh, yeah, no, they can move quite quick. I've always been impressed by that. It's greeting us. It's like, hello. Hello. It's waving. Hello, goodbye. Thank you, Brittle Star, for your time in the spotlight. So as predicted, uh, there is quite a bit of life down here, but it, it's relatively spread out. And uh, if we were to look into the sediment, we would definitely see a lot of animals living in the sediment here. But they're very small and hidden. But so far we've been seeing some anemones, glass sponges, a few corals. And a couple snails. Someone in the chat mentioned robot jellyfish, so I absolutely had to look it up, and you can get a robotic jellyfish. Well, I don't know if, like, the common everyday man can get a robotic jellyfish, but they do exist. What are they used for? Um, like, spying in coral reefs and that sort of thing. Hmm, a spy. Coral reef spy. You're spying on fish or spying on like? I think it's for you know, like exploration. Okay. Like not less invasive exploration. <laughs> Rich Nav, another two zero meters, one three five. Ooh, this great question. What do brittle stars eat and what eats them? Um, well, it depends on the I brittle can't star. Tell. There was one time I was uh, watching a dive and a couple brittle stars took down a squid. What? 
Yeah. It was crazy. Like a like a living squid? Like a living squid. It was like a tiny little squid. It was just swimming by, minding its own business, and these brittle stars reached out and grabbed it, and they like worked together to take down the squid. So apparently some brittle stars eat squid. That's um, insane. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Uh, you can look up that video on YouTube, I'm sure. It was quite... Quite crazy. Do they have any uh, predators? Uh, I'm sure they do. Um, they could be eaten by a number of different things, uh, but they're also probably not the most delicious item out there on the menu. A little crunchy? Just a little crunchy. Brittle stars at this depth might be uh, consuming things in the sediment. Um, the one that we were just looking at likely consumes animals and uh, organic matter that's in the sediment. Yeah. You already did your TVG game. There's some pink. Do you like that better? There's a slope. That way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool rock. Hide under there. Cool. Cool rock. Yeah, I love the texture on that rock. That's pretty neat. Yeah. What was that? The, the texture. Oh, sorry. I thought I heard something else. Bridge nav, another two zero meters, one three five. Dangerous game. It looks like we're uh, sort of going up a steep slope, aren't we? Mm -hmm. From now until eternity. Yep, <laughs> all the way up. It's going to get steeper. Till the very like, top. Maybe not on our watch, but... Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any indication that there might be any vertical walls? Um, I mean, these really tight contours coming up. Here's hoping. Are these contours about 10 meters apart? These are, yeah. Okay. So, I think it'll, it looks like it'll be fun. Exciting. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Coralie, well, we've got a fan of your, uh, your research wondering how thick the crust was on the rocks that were collected yesterday. Did you have a chance to... Oh no, we haven't opened them up, but we do have a rock saw on the ship I just found out, and we're going to be cutting them open soon, so we'll get back to you. Probably not today, but maybe tomorrow. So excited. Is the, the texture that we're seeing, is, is that caused because of the crust or something else? Um, it's probably partially because of the crust and partially due to the substrate that it's on. It's unlikely that you would see this, or I guess it depends on the lava flow. It, so there's two different types of lava flows that you can get. So there's pu'u'o'o and a'a. Oh, what's this? And the pu'u'o'o is more of the pillowy texture and a'a is more of a... I don't know if it's going to cooperate. <laughs> As the fastest moving small fish. Bye, fishy. Uh, but uh, uh is like more angular. Yeah, I always remember it because if I stepped on that lava, I'd just be like, ow, ow, ow. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that, that can cut you. Like, it's very sharp. And Pu'u'u'u uh, uh, is more ropey. 
or pillowy. Got a question about uh, the oh, RV. Oh, there's a snail. What is this one snail. called? This one's called Gaza Daedala. What's the common name? Um, the flailing snail. I just made that up. <laughs> oh, this, we learned it last cruise. What was the? It was uh, acrobatic. I think. Acrobatic, yeah, something like that. Crazy. We zoom in on the acrobat. Acrobat. Hello. He's exhausted. Yeah, I'll they get tired. Oh, what happened? Oh, come back. Oh, there's a neat sea star right there too. Did he just play dead? Oh, I just crashed like a toddler, like <laughs> run around the park like a thousand times. <laughs> Me huh. after this watch. Oh, closing that operculum. That's that little plate here. It, it can put its entire body inside its shell and close that little door. Mm -hmm. Take a nap. I need one of those. Right? So convenient. And we had a couple questions about uh, the ROV capabilities. Um, that can all be found on nautiluslive.org. Scroll down and look at live data. There's a picture of both of the ROVs, and you can click on each one to see their specifics. Um, Hercules can go down to a depth of about 4,000 meters. Rolling off here, flattening out. Yeah, it's flatter than flatter than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. I guess these are a bit more wide space. Oh right. Um, we might, since we're kind of flat, change our bearing a little bit to kind of get in line with the next waypoint. Sure. Um, how about one two five for a bit. One two five. Bridge nav, can we get uh, two zero meters one two five? Looks like there's a little copepod there. Copepod's just coping. Yep. Looks like we've got a twelve year old fan. Awesome. Loving the website. Um, you can on nautiluslive.org if you go at the top to education and scroll down to live ship to shore interactions. We can uh, connect directly with classrooms and you guys can ask us a bunch of questions one on one. Can we zoom there? Looks like there might be a holothurian. Sorry, I missed that. Where was the Holothorian? Oh, there it is. Okay. Can you zoom in on the Holothorian, please? Look at that little eye. So this is a relatively small sea cucumber. Our lasers are 10 centimeters apart, and so this one's just a little bit longer than that. This holothurian is likely in the family Senolactidae, and they're kind of like the little vacuum cleaners of the deep. They just go around consuming sediment and providing nice, clean sediment for everyone else to enjoy. Thanks, buddy. One more in and then settle out. Okay. Bridge and have another two zero meters, one, two, five. 
Got a shout out in the chat saying that Aaron is very talented as a videographer. Thank you. Oh, we've got a question that's kind of what, part of the uh, mission purpose, um, asking if the samples can be, uh, the geologic samples that we collect um, can be used to uh, identify where the um, seamount might have come from. Oh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I think that's part of, like, what, you know, we're trying to figure out how old, where. Yeah. They, like, came from so that's part of the idea <laughs> um you know what this is not what i study but that i'm not sure if i'm not sure if collecting the sample would help tell you where it came from but there are models that sh could show and i'm not sure how having the rock would help but you know any information that we have would help i would assume we should ask someone else. <laughs> well, uh, I do know a little bit about some rock stuff. Uh, I know that if you know what the magma pool was like, um, a rock collected can sort of be matched chemically from that magma pool, which will, will change over time. So yeah. on the big island of Hawaii, yeah, you can sort of date the age of a rock based on its geochemistry. Yeah, um, yeah, so that is true. And generally what happens when you have, like, when you have new magma coming up, um, like if it's been in the chamber for a while, it'll start to look a little bit old and assimilated. I'll push that out and then it can bring like new, really fresh stuff from the mantle. Um, but knowing where exactly where the seamounts are formed, I think, uh, you can't, you can do this and you normally do it with modeling. And there is someone at URI who does this kind of modeling who can sh like show where the seamounts came from. Um, and it's actually really cool because.